Well, again, everyone, I've had some requests to go through my hand turn pen collection. So I am going to be doing that today. Well, I'm going to be starting that today. So what I'm going to be doing is basically I have four trays like this filled with hand turned pens, and this is going to be the first of four trays. Um, I think I may have some other hand turned pens, but they're this is pretty much all of the four trays have all of my uh, hand turned acrylic pens that that are of this nature. So I'm going to start with this tray, but first I want to talk about the the actual box itself. So this is from uh, Galen Leather, and I bought it directly from their website. I don't think that these trays are available anywhere else other than their website. Um, so there's a few different ways you can buy them and they're always going out of stock by the way. So <laughs> I'm going to put a link down below to, uh, Galen Leather and the, the website that they have these particular boxes on, but, uh, they do sell out often. So if they don't have them, that they, they probably will come back in stock at some point. But basically it's a wood tray and it has this insert in it that has, it's, uh, you can remove it, but I'm not going to now because it has all these pens and it has sort of a felt material uh, covering this little thing with little pen slots here. And I will show you the side just quickly. So the newer ones have this little indent here so that you can stack them and then you can grab it in that indent, uh, which is quite nice. I actually have, so I, three of the ones that I have are the newer model, the newer model, which uh, is a little bit deeper which is nice because it accommodates really fat pens like this one, which I'll show you here shortly. Um, the older one was a little bit more shallow and didn't have those little um, indents or handles or whatever you want to call them there. So basically I have that one, that one on the bottom of my stack of four. And then this is the one that's on the top stack. Although, you know, I try to roughly organize them by color, but that they, they may not all necessarily work that way. <laughs> but I'm also not going to be doing any uh, samples of these today. I'm just going to be going through the pens and talking about who the makers are. And uh, I'll open them up and show you what nibs I have on them, but I'm not going to be testing any of these pens. Um, if there's one in particular you'd like me to do a separate video on to do pen testing based on a nib or something like that, just let me know and I'll put it on my list. Um, sometimes it takes me a little while to get to those, but I do get to them eventually, usually. <laughs> sometimes some things get lost in the shuffle, but I do try to do that. Um, so that's about this box. And then on the top of my four trays, I do have this, I'm gonna turn it so that the glare is not in your face. Um, and this is a little cover with uh, glass here. It's a little bit dusty because I have not dusted it lately. And um, it actually did come with these little, I don't know if it's a watermark or, whatever, and it was a little bit dinged up. Um, and the first tray that I got, I think was a little bit not as great a quality as the three that I got later. Um, so I, I really do feel like Galen Leather's quality for, for most of their products kind of varies a little bit depending on, you know, what batch it's in, I suppose. But uh, they are very inexpensive for what they are because if you end up getting trays like this somewhere else, I would think they would be at least twice as expensive as they are on Galen Leather. And they really work for what I'm using them for, which is basically just storage and display of these hand-turned acrylic pens. You, of course, could put any pens in them, but this is just what I've done. So I'm gonna start here on the left and go to the right. And some of these you may have seen before, but uh, I think most of them you have not. And I may not always remember the name of the blank, <laughs> just FYI. Uh, and I may not remember all the details about all these, but I will at least give you the pen maker. And you will notice that uh, some, but not all, uh, most actually, have these little washi, um, pieces of washi tape here on the bottom. And I've been marking them with the nibs that I have on them that way. And there are just some that I've either switched around the nibs recently or I never really got to marking them. So some of them don't have that, but I do try to keep track of them that way. To me, it's much easier than opening every pen to see what's there, because uh, then I can just look on the little piece of washi tape there. All right, so the first one 
is this one here, which I believe is a cocoon blank. And the company who turned this is Bone Crusher Studio. And I think they're only available um, on Instagram. And actually, let me move this tray as I'm going through them so that uh, you don't get distracted by all of the different pens here. And I'll zoom in a little bit more to get this particular one. All right, so this, I think the blank is called Ink Drop. So it has some pink and almost orangish pink in here. Uh, it's a really nice demo pen. Uh, clearly the inside was polished here. I really, really like that on the demonstrator pens to have them be completely clear. Um, there, there's maybe a little bit of haze in there, but I really do like Bone Crusher Studios. I feel like of all my hand-turned pens, um, they're the most comfortable in my particular hand. Uh, so of, of the, the different makers, this is probably the most comfortable pen design that I've found. And one other kind of cool thing is pretty much all the models that I've gotten from them post. So it does make it a little bit long and, you know, almost ridiculous <laughs> given how long it is, but it's, the cap is so light that it's kind of nice to be able to, like, if you're, if you're going to take this pen somewhere, um, I know I can post it and not lose the cap. So that's kind of nice. Um, and most acrylic hand-turned pens do not post. Okay, and this one has, this I believe is a medium SIG nib from Franklin Kristoff. So the SIG nib is sort of a variation on a cursive italic nib um, or a stub nib or, you know, an italic nib, some variation of that. Uh, but it's supposed to help you write pretty much the same regardless of the angle that you hold the pen. And I quite like the SIG nibs. They, uh, they sometimes can feel just a little bit sharp, but I really do like them. And I put them on this, this particular one, on this particular pen. Let me move my cover there. All right, so that's the first one. This next one... This is from On A Whim Woodworks. That's the turner, <laughs> the, the person who turns the pen. Uh, and this is another really beautiful example of a demonstrator pen uh, with some nice polishing on the inside. I really, really like that. And I believe that I clearly have uh, a warm space in my heart for Cocoon Blanks. This is another Cocoon Blank. Um, I think this is in their Lotus series. Uh, and I had been looking for one of these for a while, and when I saw them um, at On a Whim Woodworks, which is which is a really this this is a really great maker, um, and they tend to their pens can be anywhere from really thin to fairly thick. Uh, this is probably somewhere in the middle or maybe towards the the thicker end. Um, but I, I like the, the bigger ones. <laughs> I do have one from them that's a little bit thinner and I, I prefer the ones that are a little bit thicker. But I really, really love the swirling on here and I, I also have a thing for demo pens, clearly. And I'm gonna open this one up and this actually has a stacked nib on it. Um, this is the only stacked nib I have and it's like very very fine on this side and then if you turn it over it's uh like a triple broad or something like that uh and i have to say i'm not going to tell you the maker um but i have to say that i've been very disappointed with the stack nib uh and maybe i just need to get it tuned because when i got it the uh the uh, finer side was super super sharp like to the point of being completely unenjoyable to write with and then I've had some issues with ink flow a little bit. So that's kind of why I don't want to give you the name of the maker because I don't want to disparage them and um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. And it was kind of expensive because stack nibs are pretty expensive. But for my first stack nib, I felt like it was kind of a disappointment. All right. And this is another one from Bone Crusher Studio. And I believe this is the same model as that first one. I mean, it looks pretty similar in shape and size. You're always going to get a little bit of variation with hand-turned pens because unless they're, um, unless they have a lot of ways to make them all the same, you're going to get some variation. I mean, um, because they're made by hand. They're not made by a machine. 
All right, and I believe that this is another Cocoon Blank. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is the Lotus series or something else, but I really, really love the colors and the details here. Um, this is, I would say it's like semi, um, semi-demonstrator, although it clearly has some polished insides, which I love. So there you go. And then like the other one, this one posts as well. Uh, and I don't actually, let me try the On A Whim Woodworks one. I, I don't think I've ever tried to post it because it is narrower on this end. And oh, I guess I guess you could, but it probably would fall off because it's not, it doesn't seem very secure here on the end. So um, I wouldn't recommend trying that because it could fall off and then you don't want that to break. All right, and then the nib that I have on here, what do I have on here? This is a broad, oh, this is a broad architect. Oh, but it says it right there. Uh, it's a broad architect by the Nib Grinder, which uh, I really, really love his architect grinds. I think they're, um, they're, they're some of my favorite grinds that, from anyone. Um, I'm not as big of a fan as as I am of this, as uh, I am with their Curse of Italic. Curse of Italic nib is just okay. I mean, it's it's still good, but I think the Architect nib is really where this guy shines. So there's that. And then this next one, this is a Brooks Blanks uh, Primary Manipulation 1. So basically it is the primary colors mixed with white and then you know, you, you can get a variety of different colors when they combine here. And this is by Signature Pen Company. And it's this, it's just a beautiful pen. It's, you know, sometimes I see a pen and I'm like, I, I have to have that because it's beautiful. And this is one of those. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, those, this does not post. And then I just have a regular fine nib on here in a gold tone. It's, and these have all been steel nibs, by the way. If there's if there's some other material, I will call it out. But if I don't say, you should just assume it's a steel nib. Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful. I really love the grip section. I think I've profiled this one before on um, sort of a fountain pen favorites or may, may, may have been fountain pen favorites. Okay, and then I have another primary manipulation by Brooks Blanks, and this one is made by Walltown Pen Company. And you can kind of see the differences if you, with these two side by side, you know, what the different variation, like this has some much darker spots in here. Oops, a little piece of something stuck there. Uh, whereas this has more like even color coverage. This has some more pastel-like colors where that color doesn't really appear on here so same colors but you get different variation and this is obviously um a little bit smaller this one by walltown pens i forget which model this is they have a few different models and i think this is one of their smaller models um i would say that this is probably not super comfortable for me um i really like the design but for some reason there's something about the balance that's just a little bit off for me on this one uh, but I but I still like the pen and use it. This one also has a really pretty grip section. And uh, so this nib on here is a broad zoom nib. And I think I got this from fpnibs.com. They're located in Spain. And uh, they have all kinds of nibs that you can get custom ground and then mailed to you. Um, again, this is a steel nib. And I really, really like their grinds. I would say uh, their Zoom and their Architect, actually I don't think I have any Architect nibs by them. Um, this is a beautiful nib. So Zoom is is some, is some a type of nib that Sailor generally makes where it uh, has a little, it's like an Architect nib, but it has a little bit more of a curve, I think. Um, and you can also write different line weights depending on how you hold the pen, which is kind of cool. Um, which is why a lot of people do it with broad because then you can go from you know fine to broad essentially when you're writing but there's that lovely and this is one of my all-time favorite uh 
hand turned pen purchases. This is by uh, 1836 Custom Creations, and again, I think this is a maker that's only that's only sells their stuff on Instagram um, and is doing mostly commissions now. I think uh, the the ones that I haven't mentioned being just on Instagram, I will put a link below to their, uh, usually it's Etsy where they're selling them. So I'll, I'll put a link to their Etsy shop or whatever other shop that I got it from. I think Signature Pen Company has their own website. Uh, but this is called Mystique, a little X-Men reference there. Um, and this is again, internally polished. It's just really, really pretty. Um, really, really love this pen. And because I love this pen so much, I put a really special uh, nib on it. This is a palladium nib, or no, I'm sorry, this is a platinum nib, uh, 23K platinum nib in fine. So this is um, on the pricier side of nibs, but it writes really, really beautifully. It has a little bit of a softer uh, feel than even gold, I would say. Actually, let me, let me test that. No, I'm sorry. The, the the palladium is a little bit softer than gold, but this one's a little bit stiffer than gold, uh, but it still has a really nice feel when writing with it. And it's completely different than gold. All right. So this next one, this is another one from Signature Pen Company. And I just thought that this was such a happy pen, that <laughs> a little rainbow pen that I had to get it. Um, oh, and I think that with this last one, I think this was poured in-house. I think this was an in-house in acrylic pour. Um, and I think that this might be as well, but I'm not quite certain. Um, but it's really, really pretty and kind of fun and whimsical. And I don't remember what nib I have on here, and obviously I have not marked it. Uh, oh, so this is... Um, Fountain Pen Revolution, they had uh, some Architect nibs and I wanted to try them out. They're really inexpensive. So I got them and I put them on this pen. Um, they're okay. They're, I mean, they're they're kind of like a mass, mass produced Architect nib. Um, so depending on the, how you, the angle of how you write, it might not be super comfortable for you. Uh, I think it's fine for me, but I think there's there's really nothing that can beat a custom grind um, architect nib, especially from the nib grinder. Highly recommend. My absolute favorite nib these days is a uh, what he calls a micro architect, which is it starts with a fine nib and then it's essentially ground down to an extra fine, and you can get a little bit of line variation with the uh, architect blade essentially. And um, it's, it's real, I love it for everyday writing. It's really great. Okay, so this is made by uh, Butterknife Pen Company. And I've forgotten who made the blank, but this was, um, this was a special edition and uh, they are still available occasionally. I'll put a link to where I got this. Um, but on here I have what's called a long knife nib. And this is one that I got, I um, can't remember if I got it on eBay or Etsy or something, but these are super, super cheap nibs. And they're again, they're like architect nibs. So um, I just wanted to try it out. And because I really like architect nibs, I put it on there. But this one is just, it's another demonstrator with a nice polished interior. And uh, I think this is called Polar Lights, if I didn't say. And it's even showing up more sparkly on camera than it than it looks in person. But in the light, it really, really shines. Really, really nice. Okay, so the next one here, we're approaching the end. There's only three more left. So this is a pen by Little Pen Designs. And I've forgotten who the blank maker is. Um, but it's a maker who specializes in sort of uh, these sparkly colors. Uh, and this is sort of a teal color or dark, dark turquoise. And uh, I really like little pen designs. Their designs are fairly simple, but they are elegant and um, they're very comfortable to write with. And I just feel like there's a really good, comfortable grip section. And then this is a broad, um, is this a broad sig nib? 
I think it is. I think this is a broad sig nib. And they don't always have them in the black color, um, but I thought that was a pretty good match for this particular pen. Okay, this one is a little smaller than some of the others we've had. This is from Woodshed Pen Company. And this, I think, is a Brooks Blank called Mermaid Tears, I think. Um, and this was a special edition from uh, Woodshed Pen Company. It took a, quite a while to get it, but, you know, I mean, I, I was happy to get it when I got it. Um, but this is another sort of sparkly blue pen. Uh, you can kind of see the difference between the little pen designs. The little pen designs is is pretty similar to the other to the length of other pens in this box, and this one is rather short by comparison. So if you like a shorter pen, the uh, Walltown pens is a little bit taller than this one as well, but it's shorter than the others. So those are some options for some smaller hand turned pens. Um, this one's really comfortable for some reason, even though it's kind of short when you take the uh, cap off. I really, really like it. It came with this special edition nib, which is, it's just a regular medium sized nib, but it has this little mermaid tail etched onto it, which is really, really pretty. And then there's a special ink that went with this as well from Papier Plume. But Walltown, oh, I'm sorry, not Walltown. Uh, Woodshed Pet Company sometimes does special editions like that where every little bit of it is is somewhat special in some way. All right, so this is another little pen designs pen. Uh, and this is a blue sparkle Woo's company. I The blank, I can't remember again. I think these are both by the same blank company. So it's kind of nice to have this turquoise one and this bright blue one. And this is a little bit smaller. Um, and I just think that's variation. I'm not sure if he has different models. I've kind of forgotten because um, it's been a little while. And then the nib on here, this is a medium, is this another sig? I think it might be a medium cursive italic from Franklin Christoph. Um, oh, it, it is here. Oh yeah, yeah. So Nagahara medium cursive italic. Yeah. It's a good thing I labeled it because I would probably forget. <laughs> Okay, well, that's the last pen that is in this particular tray. And like I said, I'm not going to be doing them all at once, the different trays, but I will over time. Oops, don't pull out too much there. You're going to see the edge of my, my mat, which is definitely getting scratched up and uh, probably less ink on it than my other mat, but definitely, definitely getting some dings and use. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. If you have any questions about any of these pens or, or want to request further writing samples or whatever, please put a comment down below and I'll answer when I can. Um, feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.